Welcome back. It's still January the 16th. My guest in this segment is Werner Simbeck, and we're going to be talking about one of the most important issues in the world, which is not only climate change, which, which I guess is the topic, but the total destruction of our environment, which is, I guess, the bigger picture. So there was a UN conference a short while ago in yeah. Poland. Yeah. That's right. I missed it because... We all missed it. Yeah. The reason why, because we were all focusing on a Chinese lady that got arrested at the Vancouver International Airport. That was the story that week. Plus That's Bush, Trump, we, Bush, Russia, yeah, yeah, Trump, yeah. Trump, Trump Russia, Trump, Russia. Yeah. So there's lots, of, there's lots of important things that we should be covering, but all these other little sidekicks get covered all the time. Yes. And can I mention that that is the plan? They create these diversions to keep us from ever focusing on the issue upon which our children's futures depend because it is the environment, folks. And uh, Well, I guess we briefly mentioned, I mean, the orcas, the orcas are dying, the resident whales, resident killer whales that we have here, they're starving to death. There's not enough food, not enough fish in the ocean for them to eat. Sure, there's all kinds of reasons why that is, but shouldn't we be focusing on that, trying to help them? Yeah. Are and we doing that? Are we? No. Uh, but no, we're, we're, we want to increase shipping. We want to increase production of fossil fuels, or is it coal that we want to ship out, or oil, or gas? That's what we're focusing on, officially. And we have to clear cut the last remnants of what's left of the yep. old growth forest that That's has right. to go. Yep. And it is going under the NDP government. Absolutely. Minister of the Environment, George Heyman, former director of the yep. leader of the Sierra Club of British Columbia. But now that he's a minister in the government, all the things that he, I would say, pretended to oppose all those years when he was heading the Sierra Club, he's now fine with Site C, LNG, fracking, clear-cutting the old growth forests. So here's an interesting thing. So there was a, a report that came out uh, around the middle of the summer last year from the UN, an interim report. It was warning humanity, urging humanity to act, giving us humanity 12 years now it's 2019, we've got 11 years left. That doesn't mean that, we, it doesn't mean that in 11 years we're going to go start doing something. No, no, we have to start something today. And we only have 11 years to, to get finished. our house in order to finish yeah. reducing emissions, fossil fuel emissions, to zero. In, we have in 11 years. In 11 years. That's what we got left. Okay, I and would then, say, I would say just we that, could do it. Yes, there was an article in The Guardian, uh, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, Theoretically, it's possible to do this, but that would really mean all hands on deck. No more pipelines, no more tar sands. Yes, people will say, well, how are you going to drive to and from work? Well, there'll be a transition period where we have to ramp that down. Public transit will have to be invested in. We'll have to do, change everything. Sounds Absolutely great. Everything. Sounds great. It is sounds yeah, great. It's, yeah. It is a, a very uh, amazing story, really, in some ways. Yeah. It's humanity's last chance to get it together to work together. No matter where you're from, no matter what color of skin you have, we all would need to work together to get this done. But look what's happening. Look at the news. Who do we focus on? What do we focus on? It's just a joke. Well, we focus on anger and division, and that anger and division, and you know, we seem to be getting closer and closer to chaos and war, that comes from the very people, I think, the 1% of the 1% of the 1% who run the world. And, so what it is... And is they want us fighting each other while they do this to us. I, I think they're really fearful of giving up any of their wealth. <laughs> and they're probably right. Yes. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yes. In order to make this work, we would have to share the wealth that there is. So you have to take away wealth from the people that have a lot and give it to the ones that don't have a lot. It would be fair. Well, but that's it, not how it's going to work because they're not going to let go. They're going to basically let us fight over the crumbs. By, in the meantime, they have a superb life. But of course, eventually, there's a catch-22. Climate change is globally, global. It's a global phenomenon. Eventually, it will hit them as well. They'll run out of food too. Their bunkers only will have so much food for so many years, and then it's gone. If you destroy all life on Earth, that's pretty much what's, what's on, the, on the books. That's what they're warning about. That's what they're warning us about because we're just a, an animal as well. We depend on uh, habitat. We need food. We need fresh air. We need fresh water. If we destroy it all, if we burn all that fossil fuel that's in the ground, if we don't leave it there, but if we burn it instead, 
well, where is it going to leave us? Where is it going to leave our future generations? That's what's at stake. That's what we should be talking about day in, day out. But we're not. We're not doing that. You know, for, for the audience, you know, if you Google uh, Greta Thunberg, she was a girl, 15-year-old girl. She spoke at the UN conference. And she basically said, look, I'm not begging you to listen to me. She said, look, there's going to be a revolution coming your way. A change is going to come. And we're not going to ask for permission. That's a 15-year-old who has been protesting for the last year about climate change, saying, why should I go to school if there's no future for me? She's absolutely right. You know, something struck me over the last couple of weeks. There was this little story in the paper about um, glass not being recycled anymore. <laughs> so I thought, you know, it is so. why doesn't every family just have an assortment of glass bottles and you take them to the store and things are sold more in bulk than they are now, right? So you fill up your glass bottles and you go back home instead of having to get another glass bottle every time you go to the store. The, the whole system is run on waste and overconsumption and insanity and it's killing us and the leadership is so totally insane that they don't care. They would happily see us all dead. It would be low-hanging fruit. I would call this low-hanging fruit. Recycling glass properly is not expensive. Yeah. But of course it costs something, but there needs to be an incentive. So you have to tax the one-way bottle, the plastic. We're all talking about, oh, plastic pollution in the ocean. Well, let's go do something about it. Let's tax the plastic bottles, right, that come from our own aquifers that they fill up and then sell to us back and, and, and you know, those was plastic water bottles they're yeah. selling us. It's crazy. That's, that's insane altogether. But we should really be, so you tax and you reward. So you tax things that we don't want and you reward by reducing taxes and or make a tax exempt to the things that we do want. It's a carrot and a stick approach. The government could do it if they really wanted to, but obviously, I don't know, they have no interest in a future for their grandchildren or children. I don't understand it either. Just well, I understand it. The governments are controlled by those same people. I mean, if we think we have uh, democratic governments here in BC or in Canada, you know, we don't really understand the world we're living in. There is no democracy left in this country. Justin Trudeau does not work for the people of Canada. John Horgan does not work for the people of Canada. And uh, the political parties are controlled by the 1% of the 1%. That's why things are the mess they are. And until we can deal with that issue, uh, you know, I don't think anything's gonna, I mean, based on what's, based on the record, I don't think anything's going to change. So that's almost the more fundamental issue. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that at least people will realize that we're, you know, a couple of minutes to 12 o'clock, basically. The doomsday clock yeah. is really close. That we really need to change course and not be scared of that, of changing course, because we're doing it for our children. That's exactly right. But right. instead of that, they've got us fighting each other over yeah. so many different things. I was listening to CFAX this morning. I mean, CFAX is all about division these days, and, and, and maybe for a long, long time. The media is about division. It's always this group, this group, this group. It's never about trying to save the future for all of us. And that's what we've got to do. Hmm. Well, I mean, as I said, there's this, this girl from uh, Norway, I believe she is, Greta Thunberg. I mean, her message is just spot on, you know. She, she doesn't understand. She has a, a, a Asperger's uh, syndrome, I believe. That's what it's called. Anyways, so they like to focus on one issue and one issue only. And they, they see things in black and white. They don't see things in gray. So either... You know, you're for climate change or you're against it, for example. So she focused on climate change when she was nine years old and got depressed when she was 12, didn't want to eat anymore. This is in her story. This is what she tells people. There's a TED Talk that people could look, uh, look to and, and listen to. It's quite amazing. But she's asking us, humanity, well, the facts are all on the table. Why don't you act? Don't you want us, to, here being a 15-year-old child, don't you want me to have a life? How about... How about if I want to have a child? You've taken that all away. Yeah. yeah. Right? We have now control over their future. That's right. But we're not doing it. It's I mean, I mean we have an insane president in the United States, right, who says climate change is a hoax, wants to pull out of the Paris uh, Accord. I and mean, we have an insane. insane prime minister here 
who says, yes, we're oh, back yeah. and we're going to do everything. And then he's building pipelines well, as fast as he possibly both. can. you can both. That's impossible. <laughs> you have to be honest. That's the thing. I've said this on your show before. Why does he not just come and be honest with the people? Be, tell them what the scientists say, right? They are telling us the truth. Look, yeah, you, you could find the odd scientist who will disagree. Of course, there'll be always some idiot. But if the majority, if the majority, you know, is trying to warn us, why don't we want to act on this? Don't you want a greener future? Don't you want to drive an electric car? Don't you want to be more efficient? Don't you want salmon back in the streams? I mean, there are all these benefits that if you do it now, and even if, you, even if it turned out it wasn't as dire as maybe we thought it was, but if it was dire and we didn't do anything, I mean, we would be the biggest losers on earth. We are, I mean, obviously, already, <laughs> you know. My 10-year-old son understands this whole issue better than most. Yeah. And he doesn't understand why it is that we're not acting. Well, and I try to tell him, look, there's a bunch of crazy people out there. Yeah. It's because that's all you can that's all that's left. Yeah. You have to call them insane. They should be removed from power and thrown into jail. You can't promise do something for the environment and then go buy a pipeline. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's insane. That's your that's insanity. And 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 not only that, but it's so beautifully done by Trudeau and the media working together for the corporation right. that it seems to make sense for a lot of people and he still leads the polls, you know? So the only people <laughs> that truly do, sing, do something and actually get into the news are the native people. And I have to give them all the hats off and all the respect for that. They're fighting for their homeland because they live off the land. They know what it's like not to have fish in the waters, right? So and they're fighting for every one of us as well. They are. Because of this LNG pipeline that they are blocking goes ahead, it means the fracking destruction of a significant chunk of BC, the poisoning of massive amounts of water. And John Horgan is fine with all of that. He's number one behind the uh, fracking industry. I it is completely uh, yeah. insane. I encourage people to watch Gasland. It's a documentary. You'll find it on Netflix potentially or on YouTube. Watch Gasland. Then you know what goes on in uh, northern BC with the fracking. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's happening here. We don't even know about it. it it's, it's, uh, I get the odd email from people who live up there and in, in the Alberta side of it. it is, it's like living in a war zone. It is completely insane and we don't even hear about it there. Yeah. You know, they've, it's a mess, folks, and I so don't I'll, know if we're going to get out of it. Well, I just wish people would look at themselves, look in the mirror. You have some power. Everybody, we all have power. So next time we get to vote, federal election is coming up in the fall, look at your candidates. See how they stand on the environment. Are they going to do something or are they just going to promise? I think we've seen now what the conservatives are not useless, the liberals are useless. The NDP, NDP hasn't done anything yet, really. Yeah. Okay. But then there's the Green Party. You know, and I don't want to really advocate for either of them. Yeah. But obviously, there is one that's quite obvious that's always standing for, up for the environment. We need to support them. That sounds like about as good an idea as any other. How would pe you, you said people should Google this young lady who spoke. Uh, how do you Greta spell her name? Thunberg. Yeah. Greta Thunberg. You just try that. And okay. you go UN T -T Climate Conference. T-H-U-N-B-E-R-G. Okay. Yeah. Word of time. Thank you very much, Vernon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. <coughs>